Okay, I think it will be an exciting journey. <laughs> so, I think before we start, round of applause for our speaker and panelists as well. First. And I'm actually very happy today and because they are my Suhu. You know, Suhu is a master in their field and they are a leader in their organizations as well. Very happy to have you, Pak Ganesan, Pongki, and Pak Himansu. So I think, uh, just cut the crap. <laughs> so our topic is about what it takes to build a winning marketing organizations. So first, maybe to every participant, because I need to follow the guidance. If I, if I don't ask this, Busanti will kill me. <laughs> so Pak, what is your takes? What is really, what does it mean when we say winning marketing organizations? Maybe start from Pak Ganesan, okay? Not how, yeah, Pak, but what is this? So uh, first, I'll give a cliched answer, and you have to be direct, so I'll be very direct. The yeah. cliched answer is to, to all the Nestle youngsters at the back, this is what winning marketing is. Penetration, frequency, brand equity, <laughs> give me the market share, give me the GRPs. So that's all the, the, the things that, that we ask. But I think marketing is much more than that. Marketing is in the DNA, is in the soul of any company. So a winning marketing organization has it built in and it revolves around the future, and the topic is also the future of marketing. Marketing cannot be short term, it has to be long term. So winning marketing organizations always think about relevance. Relevance of the consumer today and for the consumer tomorrow. Okay, nice one. Relevance in the long term. Wow, masterpiece. <laughs> okay. Then maybe Paongi? Okay, if we talk about the Winning marketing team, I think the most important thing is, I already mentioned, not only just know about marketing, but the most important now is all the people in the marketing should know the new capability this moment is to know the ecosystem. And also have a knowledge how uh, she or he or the team in marketing to have a capability to connect connecting all the dots and the all platform because now it's, there, there are many platforms uh, in the digital world that we should know well how to connect it. That's the important thing and the other thing that in the, uh, in the marketing team should know also how to analyze the data because now is the era of data. And one thing, the most important thing from the winning team is all the people should have a patient. The patient to build the business, especially in the marketing side. Okay, okay. So I'm quite pretty amazed, Pak pa Ongki talk about ecosystem. It's like startup now, FMCG. <laughs> yes, very good point, Pak. Pak Himansu. Good afternoon. You know, you saw the winning marketing organization, so there are three words. Uh, and uh, I'll start with marketing first. Marketing is about uh, the play field for consumers' mind and hearts. And uh, winning consumers' minds and hearts are different for different type of organization, different for different types of time. You know, today's time is very different than five years, uh, five years earlier. And I'm sure five years later will be very different. So it's a very evolving field. There's no one size fits all. Uh, but there are a couple of must have in that portion. You know, like any good organization, it's not just about a bunch of people, but uh, people organized in a certain fashion, enabled by tools and processes, powered by some sort of a culture. Right? Like uh, test and learn, learning new things, dealing with uh, uncertainty, dealing, dealing with some type of uh, challenges, needs to be ingrained into the culture to you know, continuously evolve and win. Because there is no one size to win consumers' mind and heart, right? There is no one size. Be provocative a little bit. You asked what? But then who's responsible in a marketing, winning marketing organization? Oh, as, uh, I'm going to copy with pride from my friend Bharat because you can't leave winning marketing organizations to marketeers alone. Yeah. It's the job of the CEO to make winning marketing, ex marketing organizations oh, because wow. it's too important. Marketing decides everything and marketing is everything. 
Okay, completely agree with that. And just to continue with you, Pak, I think uh, we nobody, uh, no one doesn't know Nestle, more than 100 years old company. So I think uh, looking at the global trends, be it outside Nestle or in Nestle itself, when it comes to decision making, is it more centralized or decentralized at this moment and why? So I'll start by creating two caveats. Firstly, is, the, is there such a thing as a global consumer? Although it's global MMA, is there a global consumer? And second, being in the food industry, food is generally local. Now I'll give you the Nestle spiel a bit. Um, unlike the giants of FMCG, Nestle comes from a small country. Our home market is Switzerland, and only 2% of our turnover is from Switzerland. So we are naturally decentralized. So building on this thing about consumers being local, we always like to put consumers and customers in the heart of everything we do by building trust in our brands. And building trust in our brands is very, very localized. Dan Kao, Milo, Bear Brand are for the Indonesian consumers. So we will do everything that builds relevancy to the local Indonesian consumers. So we generally, generally for Nestle, we are a little bit more decentralized. Of course, there are certain other global components, but our decision making as far as marketing and marketing execution, it's very, very decentralized. Okay, got, got it, got it, Pa. So I think comes to Pak Himansu, this is interesting. So there are three clients and Pak Himansu just alone, media and agency. So it's time to attack the media and agency guy. <laughs> just just a joke, yeah, Pak Himansu. But I think uh, looking at like it's what like, Pak, uh, Pak like, Ganesan said. It's that thing global, act local. Act local yeah? uh, similar with that thought, Pak, it means that the local has more uh, authority. So I think as a client, we will become more fussy. <laughs> To see, <laughs> demanding, I think everyone, I think the client will be aligned with me, Pak. So as an organization, how you ensure your team actually can be uh, adapt to the changes using the latest technology, understand the digital, maybe probably come up with the new ideas, and how you ensure your organization actually deliver that, one. And second, how to convince this all fuzzy client. So you're defining the challenge for me already. <laughs> uh, but I'll, before I answer that question, I'll pick up on pa, what Paganesan said, uh, that marketing is too important to be left to the CMOs. I think it is very, very clear and very apparent today. Uh, look at the times that we live, you know, high inflation, you know, high commodity prices, high input cost, uh, pressure from price hike and everywhere. The entire business has to move in, and I think CEO doesn't have an option. So it's no longer about CEO having an option in that case. Uh, coming to, you know, how do we deal with Porsche? I think the simple question is the client centrality. You talked about global or local. Uh, and I think if you ask a brand marketer, they'll say consumer is the king. Uh, similarly, you ask for, you know, people in marketing services. Uh, their client's business is the centerpiece of how I should organize myself. So client centrality is in the center and from there I think I have a small principle that I say is called I2D2. I-I-D-D. Uh, I, I, so imagine, initiate, design and deliver. Uh, so what happens in our business, we are constantly dealing with the changes of the client organization, dealing with the changes of the client's uh, brand marketing challenges. So if change management doesn't sit at the center of, a, of our organization, we will be extremely lagging behind. So we say that one of our values should be constantly looking at imagining, you know, from a client's perspective, what the challenges are, work backward, take some steps, initiate those changes in the company, design a solution, and then with the organization, execute them. That's why I call it an I2D2. Okay. So really understand the client needs, basically. Yeah, yeah, okay. And maybe to Pa Onki, just change slightly the topics. I think um, you as a leaders handling multiple successful brands, Pa. So just want to understand how your organizations in marketing, your senior leaders, actually can cope or anticipate the sudden changes that sometimes comes in consumer life. 
Sometimes that you can see clearly, but sometimes we not so sure actually. So how as a marketing uh, company, you can really anticipate that? Yeah, as you know that uh, the changes is very fast. That's why, as I mentioned, uh, build the, the good winning team marketing organization, not only just man, talk about marketing, about branding, build the brand, distribution. Uh, the most important thing is we should learn a lot of new innovation, the way uh, of uh, new innovations. And the most important thing for me is build the people. To have a winning team is very important. And our people should more now engage to, 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 to the consumers. Uh, and know the consumer's behavior is a lot of changes in the market. And we should know how to keep on track for that. Uh, that's why building people, uh, the people should have a new capability, as I mentioned to you, that uh, how the capability now to connecting all the dots that and the consumers. Now the consumers uh, face is we should look about the omni channels, omni online, channels. offline, and everything. We should hmm. keep on track for that. Okay. Uh, not only just a traditional way that how to to see the way we do in the online, offline, and that's why the build the omni channel, build the ecosystem is very important, and then our people should understand uh, okay. for so that. So they build the people's capability on that area, yes, something new people. that they under need to understand. Yes, okay. and as in my experiences, if we know, because we operate also in many countries, uh, our people also should know, understand the consumers in each country is different. As Bagh and mentioned also, from Switzerland, Indonesia is different. That's why the, our capability of the team in Indonesia and in other countries also is uh, different, yeah, maybe. different okay. Uh, capability. Okay, okay. And I just, before this session, uh, thank you, Paongki. I just spoke with Paganesan. I said, uh, in some record, it showed that you work for 20 years. He said, it is wrong. So I work for about more than 30 years in Eastley. <laughs> so now, I think with... Tapi masih muda lagi. Ya. Tapi masih muda, yeah, for sure. <laughs> I think what is exciting is, but I just want to understand what is your take when we say winning the marketing world, in your view. And of course, when I say that, which one is important, internal process or obsessed to the consumers? I think you will say that both. But the question is not that. But I think how you balance those, maybe, Pak. Um. Maybe I'll give some context first, because the word startup comes up all the time in today's conversations. Mm. But 150 years ago, we were also a startup. <laughs> Nestle started up in the kitchen of Henri Nestle. One mm. man decided to make an infant cereal when he, he heard his neighbor's child crying. And from that company, today it's a multinational is multinational and it's the biggest FMCG company in the world. So as we progress and structures come into play, we need a bit of process. Process is a dirty word, but we need to put that in place so that we benefit from our scale, we keep alignment from what's happening in the big ship to all our markets, but at the same time, marketing in particular cannot be prescribed. It cannot be process-centric all the time. The processes help to put a framework, but in the heart of the framework or the focal point of the framework, it should be always on the consumer. We should be consumer-centric. Processes help us get closer to understand the consumer, but that marketing spark, the X factor, cannot be driven by process-centric stuff. Oh, okay. Brilliant answers, I think. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so round of applause for every, uh, the panelists, I think. And now to Pak Himansu, I think. So I think uh, you can see the future. I know, Pak Himansu. <laughs> so if you can see the futures, what will be the marketing capability that is, will be very important for the success of organizations now and futures? 
I wish I knew the answer. <laughs> uh, you see, marketing is so unpredictable because we are dealing with the consumer's mind. And, uh, uh, but then there are definitely some guide maps, road maps that can help us think on those lines. Today, everything that we think is about addressable. Uh, you know, all media that you look at, look at around today, there is a degree of addressability built into it. We know who we want to talk to or we plan to talk to somebody in a certain design manner. This addressability has been evolving over the period of time. It is not perfect, it will never be perfect. Uh, we will never know, uh, are we talking to a person who definitely want to buy me at that point in time. But this addressability capability will evolve, tools will mature. And I think all marketing organizations will invest and build capability towards building this addressability as part of their repertoire. Okay, that's a very nice one, Pa. So I think, um, again, since we talk about winning marketing organizations, this is probably not in the briefs because the time still quite a lot. <laughs> so it's okay for the panelists. But, but, but Ricky, since there's a bit of time, I, I, wanna, I forgot to answer your question in full. Okay. Decentralize or centralize? We have to be decentralized because of you. Oh, okay. And pa, this is me. Because uh, you also mentioned marketing warfare, you are fighting with us. To Jokurma lawan bad brands. So, you're building the category by actually. Maaf, saja. But, and that's why when we have brands which are competing with powerhouse. Uh, Indonesian companies like Kalbe and Mayora, we have to be even more decentralized. We cannot keep calling to our head office to say, what do I do? And Ricky is doing this. <laughs> so therefore, decentralization, decentralization is empowerment. That, and we also work on a basis of trans, trust. We have to be even more decentralized because Indonesia itself is not one country. Mm. Indonesia is a concept. It's an ecosystem of diverse populations and, and um, social strata and, and all the world we believe in being decentralized because oh, of you, pa Vicky. Okay, okay. <laughs> pa <Gana -sans. laughs> but to be honest, I think we admire like Nestle company and the other company from Indonesian's right, local company. Is good, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, Pongi, yeah. We also admire them, yeah, actually. How to be big, such a big company like them. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, pa, the question is actually will be for three of you. We, we, have, we have the same uh, dreams, yeah, to be like, uh, to be like them, yeah, yeah. and we like to be like you as well. So, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but my comment is also uh, to be cent uh, decentralized. I think it's maybe bad because the people underground should mm. know well how to uh, do the best executions. That's oh, not. okay, okay. Talking about the execution, very nice point, Pa. Then I will come to three of you later. But Pa Ongki, when you since you talk about execution, right? So what is important, strategic thinking or execution? You cannot say both. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, the most important thing is, as I mentioned, that to build the leader in the marketing is very important. If you uh, if we have many good leader, especially in the in in the area in the country, uh, they can have a strategic thinking, and then do uh, to do the executions, adapt to and more engage to the consumers in the okay. execution side. <laughs> okay, okay, got it, Pa. So still try to answer both is important. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. <laughs> Yeah, whatever the strategy, so long the execution is right, the, it looks like a great strategy. Eh? So true. But, Paganesans, percentage. When I can, you do the percentage, strategic thinking, how many percentage versus executions? I think I'll start with what is good strategy. Good okay. strategy must be simple, clear, focused, scalable, and differentiated. The minute you have good strategy, simple, clear, focused, scalable, and differentiated, then it's 99% execution, 1% strategy. Wow. Great answers. But very good also to get another point of view from Pahimansu. You have such powerful answers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, 
If I may put this question back to you, in you know, portions, uh, and we talked about centralization, decentralization. From an Indonesia perspective, and you run a multi-country organization as well, uh, what's your take on this uh, execution versus strategy? <laughs> this is, is not part of the agreement, actually, Pa. <laughs> <So> <laughs> but I think, uh, <laughs> to answer your point, to be fair, is actually for me, strategy without execution is nothing. <laughs> Yeah, at the, at the end, actually, we need people to execute, yeah, Pak. So, I'm on that side, actually. Yeah. But, okay, back to the point, Pak. Since we talk about winning marketing organizations, if I can learn from three of you, three of you, maybe just say three things, Pak, in order to build a good marketing organization, winning marketing organization. Uh, sorry, before you go to the next one, uh, since I see Pa Bharat here, I want to tell you a story on execution. Uh, so, globally, execution is measured as an execution quotient. There's a Ram Charan's book, it talks about how good you are in execution. And some of the con global companies have done this score from Indonesia and many other countries. Do you know which country scores most in execution? Indonesia. Indonesia. Globally, Indonesia's execution quotient come on one of the top, uh, you know, an execution quotient. So, clearly, this country believes in, uh, you know, power of execution. Okay, okay. Exciting. And, and I think I have, can also give a comment that between the execution strategy, I think people can have the same strategy, but the execution is an art. Execution? In the marketing, execution is an art. Execution is an art. art. Oh. Yeah. Uh, the strategy of uh, the science people can have a knowledge about the strategy, can learn, but executions. Okay. It's need and experience. Okay. Okay, that nice point there, Pa. If execution is an art, can we say the strategic thinking is also an art? <laughs> See, all difficult questions come to agency. <laughs> uh, strategic thinking is uh, science. Uh, but I think decisions that you take as part of this one definitely are there. Okay, it's more on the science, to be honest. Okay, got it. And Pongi, before I come to Pak Ganesan, is the strategic thinking can be an art? It depends the way we, we see, but what I see is uh, what the most important for me is execution. Execution. And, uh, mm. prepare, uh, execution to make it happen. This okay. is more important. Okay. So before Pak Himansu asks me, I will answer. So for me, actually, strategic is also an art, Pak. Because in Bahasa, we say, ngeles. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Pak Ganesan, what is your take on that thing? It's an art form that can be learnt. You're, you're not born with strategic thinking. <laughs> mm. We are not born with the strategic things. Okay. Okay, since we have uh, 19 minutes, uh, 18 minutes, 17 seconds, <laughs> just one more question. I'm really excited actually how you think it's important to build a good marketing and winning marketing organizations. Just maybe just a closing statement, three things that we need to focus on, each of you. I'll, okay, three things. Okay. <laughs> Heart. Because in the age of digitalization, you are letting the numbers take over the heart. Mm. And mind alone doesn't make you win. So heart, heart, consumer, consumer, brand, brand. Make the consumer love your brand. Wow. Okay, Paongki. Yeah, for me, it's the same. That start from our patient, from our heart. Patient, the patient. From our heart. Know your customers, and also you should have. Efficient as a dream, what we would like to do. Efficient. Okay, great ones. Okay. And I think consumer centricity and speed. Okay. <laughs> okay, I think thank you so much, Bahi Mansu, for Afghanistan. Thank you, uh, and a round of applause for this great trip. Thank you so much. Thank you very much once again for all of our panelists and moderator. We'd like to invite you to stay on stage and uh, 
maybe step forward for our photo op. Gentlemen, we'd like to request for you to just go to the center of, yes, there you go, of the stage for our photo op. Thank you so much for such a riveting discussion. A lot of takeaways for all of our participants today. All right, ladies and gentlemen, can we have another round of applause for our panelists? Pai Manshu, Mr. Ganesan, Ampa Babanar, Bapa Ongki, and of course, Bapa Riki. Thank you very much once again, gentlemen.